Yo, what's going on guys? This is Brendan back again with another video and today we're talking all about dynamic range. So we're gonna talk about what dynamic range is, how it works, and why it's even important. So basically dynamic range, or sometimes just referred to as latitude, is the amount of exposure detail that is maintained through the darkest part of your shadows to the brightest part of your highlights without clipping. And it's super easy because it's just measured in stops of light. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get off the couch here, go behind the camera and show you guys false color mode on the monitor, change the exposure around a little bit and give you guys an idea of what's clipping in this image and what's blown out and all that stuff. So if I show you the false color mode on my monitor, you can see the exposure information of this shot. And it's looking like it's clipping the shadows by the couch there underneath that pillow. And it's also clipping in the sky through the windows. Now earlier, I've used my little Sekonic analog light meter to test the exposure. Side note, I highly recommend all you cinematographers out there, go pick yourself up one of these things. They're really cheap, they're batteryless, they're super reliable, they're practically indestructible, and it's a really nifty little tool to have. So while I was testing out this particular shot, I actually got a reading of around F90 on the sky back there, and about a half a stop below F1, I actually don't know what number that is, on the darkest part of the couch underneath those pillows. So that's just over 13 stops between the two clipped parts of the image, the absolute darkest shadows and the absolute brightest highlights. And so 13 stops of dynamic range is a lot for a camera to have. But Red Digital Cinema, the company that makes this Scarlet W that I'm shooting on right now, they actually rate this camera at 16 and a half stops of dynamic range. So according to my tests here today, it's looking like that number of the actually usable latitude of this camera is a little bit lower than 16 and a half, a few stops lower. So obviously, one huge purpose of having so much dynamic range like this, it obviously gives you a lot of flexibility in color grading the image in post. And the other thing, of course, is it's very forgiving. So if you make mistakes, or if you're shooting in a very difficult lighting environment, you can still pull off a great look and maintain all the detail throughout the entire image. But those aren't the only reasons that dynamic range is really awesome and why cinematographers like us love having so much dynamic range. It's all about trying to emulate that filmic look. And traditional film stocks have lots and lots of dynamic range in the negative that you can pull back while you're processing it. The reason is, is because when you have so much dynamic range, you wind up having a smoother transition between the shadows to the midtones to the highlights. There are no hard edges or cutoffs in film when you blow out the highlights, for instance. It still gradually transitions from a clipped highlight or a clipped shadow into the parts of the image that still have information. So obviously that's a lot more pleasing to the eye. It always looks a lot more organic and it winds up making people, your actors, your talent, look a lot more attractive because it winds up smoothing out those skin tones, smoothing out that complexion and making everybody look beautiful. And yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanna talk about with dynamic range. I think I covered a whole lot of this video and if you want to know more about dynamic range or if you want me to talk about more kinds of subjects like this, just let me know. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.